This is my do-it-yourself VR shoes and support rig setup. I also have a freestanding support rig. So I've been using these VR shoes since I think last October and they've worked great, but there's room for improvement. I've been working on a new VR shoe design. Here's what it looks like. There is still a bunch of 3D printed parts, but its structure is mostly aluminum flats. No welding is required. The main tools I used were a hacksaw, vise, hand drill, and of course, a 3D printer. The previous design is really an overshoe. You wear regular shoes with them. With the new design, no regular shoe is worn. You just wear your sock. This makes this design smaller than the previous one. They're about the same height when you factor in that you had to wear a regular shoe with the other one. The previous design weighed a total of 1,143 grams when factoring in the weight of the regular shoes I would always wear with them. The weight never really bothered me, but the lighter the better. The new design weighs 691 grams right now. It will weigh a little bit more once I add all the electronics, but once I add them, I still think it's going to weigh a lot less than the previous design. Speaking of, electronics for tracking will go here in this tray. Tracking with SteamVR is the next thing I'm going to be working on. Tracking will use an IMU and this wheel with an encoder. Since someone is going to mention it, yes, an optical flow sensor would also work. I added this curve at the front of the new VR shoe. It was easy to do with my hacksaw and vise. This makes it a little bit more comfortable and easier to walk forward, which is great, but it also makes it a lot easier to walk backward and run than with the previous version. Backwards walking and running weren't great in the previous version, but with this version, I could see myself doing them a lot more. For more comfort, the new version uses an insole. I also tried a gel insole, but I didn't go with it. This one is comfortable, and it's a fourth of the weight of the gel insole. I've used the new shoes three times now, one hour each and my feet and ankles have not felt sore afterwards. I'll mention that yes, these shoes are more comfortable and feel more natural to walk with, but it's not completely natural. It's not a one-to-one -one with actual walking. I don't expect the sensation to be one-to-one -one for any passive VR locomotion device, but after some practice, it's very fun and adds a lot to the immersion. My new setup is quieter. Here is what it sounds like. The microphone is on the chair next to me. I'm really happy with how quiet they are now. Most of the noise now is coming from the squeaking from the support rig, which I have some ideas on how to eliminate. I just haven't had time to implement those ideas yet. I think most of the noise reduction comes from the new rubber mat that I'm using. This mat is kept in place by tape. I ended up trying several kinds of tape, and this is the one that worked the best. And I can remove the tape easily. I realize that taping a mat to the floor isn't something that everybody will want to do. It works for me and I'm sure that you can think of a few alternatives. I will be incorporating this mat into a new freestanding support rig that I'll be building later. The new design has mostly empty space underneath the heel. I did this on purpose. This is so that a shorter pair of the shoes can easily be made, or possibly to add a motor or two into the space. That's it, the design file is in my GitHub, free and open source for anyone to use. My next task is to add feet tracking. 